Hi, this is James Gardner, the Senior Tech Geek, and today I'm going to talk about Library Management Systems, or LMSs. So what is an LMS? Well, first of all, let's have a look at what an LMS used to be. So uh, over here, I've got the Library Management Shelf. So we've got a lot of content in cinema, and a lot of it comes into our facilities, and it has to go somewhere and we need to go there when we need a film so oh, we need this film on the server oh we'll go to the library management shelf and go get it and you can see here there's trailers spare dcps here and then dcps from distant distribution and that's how we used to do it before we all really become more and more digitized and the network became more like you know everything gets delivered over the internet or sort of data delivery today so just quickly um again what is what how films used to come up well they go um digitally but traditionally they used to come on these D dcp boxes sent from the just you know this one's as you can see is from deluxe and in that box this box uh would be the info sheet which had data about the the, the um the film which the projectionist would usually store upstairs and, and, and enter it into any system that you need to you also had the disc uh, in a crew caddy sled um, also the extra data on the disk as well to make sure that it's the right disk and it's the right data and so that's how uh, quite a few sites still get it a lot of independents still send content around on physical formats be it um, these old these old crew drives which are slowly being phased out uh, and a lot more people are tending to use just uh, USB 3 drives etc they're much cheaper to purchase and also to send um, but there's still a lot of this around uh, and as everything goes digital these these things are just being used up until they basically you know they all have a certain lifespan but so what are, what are we doing now uh, let's have a look at um, uh, a, an image of how sort of LMSs work today and and uh, how they help you so in this diagram here we have a DCP provider and these days a lot of the content is coming over uh, data links internet or private links it really depends uh, different places do it different ways and from there actually you go to the internet and you go to the different locations and from the location uh, in the location you then use a system to suck them into usually that's a TMS slash LMS it really depends all TMS is typically to also act as LMS because a TMS needs an LMS to operate but also there are people who have LMSs for just single LMS type solutions it's you know a library solution you may have a somewhere where you just want to keep a big library of content uh, for a particular site or, or for other reasons or you may not even be a cinema and you're dealing with a lot of content as a distribute just as a distributor and you've got a lot of content coming into your um, business that needs to be maintained searchable so you know what's going on where you've got content etc um, anyway from there you can see the arrows here they go in different directions so you might get a DCP from here goes to the internet goes to the site goes to the projector or the playback device in the projector but just as so a projector or a playback device in a projector can actually act as an LMS and you can actually move content back out of it so you may want to, for example, move content out of the projector into another projector. Um, this is all done over FTP, but obviously if you can move it out of the projector to another projector, you could actually move it onto a, a, another LMS. So you can see here how content can tr really travel all the way up back into other locations. It's commonly seen here that I have arrows going up through here. So this might be a, a, a chain and they may get an independent film to this location and then that, that the, the chain takes on the responsibility of moving it to all the other locations so they are probably using their own virtual private network and just moving it over the internet to all the locations that may need to play that content um, typically though uh, moving content around uh, you need permission from the distributor if you are going to do such things as moving it digitally between sites but typically all independent distributors are very happy to do that because you're saving them money right um, so that's how uh, really where the data flows that's the data flow of films moving around a typical theatrical cinema exhibition solution or uh, in, a, in any country so so that's what an LMS allows you to do right this is what you can do with an LMS so to to give you a better ex demonstration of this we'll have a look at the, the catcher tool that I is a free tool that I uh, make available it has an LMS built into it so we'll have a look at how it works to give you a more hands-on feel of what's going on with an LMS so we'll jump over to um, 
the element solution here. So obviously you've got media assets that the, the uh, LMS is sucked in. And in this situation, we've got a list of the DCP, DCP um, select the DCP by CPL. So you may have a, a DCP, but a DCP can have multiple CPLs in it. So you select the C CPL here, and then uh, it actually automatically selects the DCP that, that's contained in down here. And so from there, obviously, again, you can um, have a look at all the metadata to do with that, D that DCP that, that is in your LMS. And also a lot of LMSs will QC the um, DCP as well in terms of make sure every byte is correct by using checksums, etc. Run them through a, a checksum system and also check for um, if any sort of the way it was created may be incompatible with any sort of playback system you have. And in this case, we use the Clear Meta um, free uh, tool, which is um, a tool used to check um, DCPs. It's built into the solutions and it's also um, uh, um, doing some of the RDD52 um, recommendations in terms of making suggestions if a file or a DCP is not doing some of the recommendations to make it as compatible with the rest of the world as possible. Uh, so see so here, there's no warnings here, but you will get some, so you, uh, uh, a bad one here, there's a warning and an error, and it'll say, you know, there's something that's a little bit out of spec here. Uh, typically, just because it's bad doesn't mean it's not going to play, but it will indicate to you that there are there is potentially an issue with this DCP, and it may be something you understand from, from your cinemas that they have uh, a particular tendency not to play content with this sort of issue and you can spot that here because the system will um, identify any of those sort of issues and record it for you. Now obviously uh, to be an LMS you have to ingest stuff so we're going to um, go to here and you've got a general in my solution you've got a general manual uh, you can define sources so you may define a source which is another cinema it could be a player or it could be uh, a advertising supplier or or trailer supplier uh, because one of the nice things about this LMS is it will monitor a FTP location so if for example uh, an advertising supplier puts a new ad up um, the system will every day once to twice a day log in and check if there's anything new and if there is it'll download it automatically into the LMS and send you a report that it has been downloaded and QC checked and it is ready to ingest anywhere you want or it's ready to move anywhere else you want because as you can see you can move once it's in your system you can move it anywhere you want um, so um, network ingest obviously so you can scan uh, a device on a network is a local device it's very fast or I can actually this is um, a, a cinema device this is actually a player at a federation one of my cinemas and it's going to go off and start scanning that device uh, now if it's got lots of content on it it will cache it and it was a very quick scan there because um, it had actually uh, scanned that device early today in my testing so it came back very quickly and updated it very quickly but typically if I go somewhere it hasn't done for a long time it'll it'll set up uh, it'll show you what it probably has in its cache it's got nothing in its cache at the moment because I haven't run it on this for, for months but now it's actually updating its cache database which probably I think it's a I set it for a, a three month uh, after three months it, it, it um, deletes data uh, endpoints so if I refresh that actually it'll tell you this is what it's actually cached so far and it's still caching more content as it goes along this will this will grow bigger and as you can see here there's little dots here says you if it's ingested already and also gives you the status of how big the file is and how long it is uh, in the scan and you can then uh, basically select on a particular item I can do something very quickly here and you know uh, ingest selected asset and then it'll add it to the download queue here. It's a very small file, so it's already ingested it. Uh, and then it'll um, do other tools. It'll QC it. Oh, there, there it goes. It's going into the ingest queue. It's now in in ingesting. It does a QC, and it's it emailed me that that's just been ingested and it's all green because it's all good. So that's how it works. Obviously, you could click on ten, many of them, and it'll just add them to a FTP queue, and it'll just FTP them down as it as it needs to, and uh, and ingest them and QC them and etc. Now, obviously, if we, we're talking about uh, just before we go, you can actually ingest devices as well. So if you plug in a, a good old CIU sled or a USB disk into the particular LMS system that this is running on, you can scan those devices, and you can ingest it directly from a physical device as well. 
Um, but in terms of sources, so here's just a um, like a, we're talking. You know, we'll look at um, a typical. There's Forbes Cinema One, um, and you've got the login information. And as as I said before, you could actually make this anything like a. a another location or a service provider of ads or trails etc and you can actually tell it to actually sync it every day once or twice a day so if there's anything new it'll it'll download it automatically so really at the end of the day all you really see is is these sort of messages here so here's an example of um, looking in my mailbox these are all in the bin because I once I see them I typically delete them um, there's a bit of a file that was ingested er, uh, earlier today um, and there's a QC report here it's basically saying that the, some of the metadata in the XML for the subs isn't really as expected by RDD 52 but it doesn't mean it's not going to play but it's just giving you that warning and any other particular things but at the end of the day you've been indicated that's ingested also as it ingests it auto deletes if it needs to so the oldest content will be deleted first um, you can actually mark content as never delete so if we go back to um, here media assets you can actually see here this one's got a little, uh, little mark next to it I can go there uh, protect from auto delete so it will be excluded from the auto delete queue so if you want to keep some content on the library for forever just set it to uh, never to auto delete um, so th there you go so as you can see here other things came in um, all good uh, total green light but as things come into your sites or into anywhere of your sites it'll inform you it'll inform you of the QC report so you know it's good or bad or if it needs to be checked and that's all just coming in automatically quickly checking your email really much if I see a green light I say yep so now it's in delete because I know it's all good um, but you know but it's very quick you don't have to look for it and it's tracked and etc but the system also you can actually log it all logs everything you can log it as well but finally um obviously as an LMS we have to share things so we'll have a quick look at um so the FTP so it can actually FTP into the LMS and as you can see here it exposes um, the content uh, in directories to make it easier to um, filter them out because you know if you're ingesting into a uh, into a, a system by hand and you've got a really big LMS with lots of files on it it can take quite some time for the for the player to actually um, scan all those files like I showed you before how mine scanned it in the background it has to go through that uh, when you want to ingest it can't be in the background you have to wait for it to finish before it'll list all the content that it finds um, to help with that the system makes everything available or you can actually say only show me uh, the adverts um, there's nothing in feature because it's a test system and I don't have anything ingested that's a feature um, and so you know so that really helps with that as well and that's how content travels around through systems is basically with an FTP uh, access to those locations anyway that's what an LMS system is uh, and that's the the catcher free LMS solution it's got lots of other tools in it as well um, just quickly it's got um, uh, where are we looking here we've got to do some videos on the lady about um, auto KDM and KDM alert down here play out logs so you can pull out all the logs out of the projectors and search them and characterize them and get them to send you reports about what's played and when or write custom reports for a provider um, and also do other things like um, automatic uh, device discovery firmware updating etc potentially uh, later on I'm going to do some uh, L uh, FLM and uh, yeah so it's going to be doing all those little nice little tools in the future as well as what I've just showed you here today so I hope it's a very nice tool you find it interesting it's a good one for, for a small cinema to, to get started with uh, you know IT um, um, converting your you know into an IT infrastructure which you know digital cinema is basically a big you know playback device a, a big computer these days and you're getting really um, uh, up to date on how all this IT stuff works and how it can improve the the costs of running these complex systems and making it easier to run these uh, systems anyway that's James Gardner the Cinetech Geek bye for now